This podcast is brought to you by Podspot Events. Hello and welcome to the Bondi Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Beattie. This is the second in our series of shorter episodes called Bondi Shorts. The guest on this episode is Jason, the man behind the Instagram account Drone Shark App. In this episode, Jason talks about his favourite moments that he's captured with his drone since he's been running the Instagram account. We also talk about the sharks that come into Bondi Beach, including Great Whites. And we also get into the debate around shark nets and drum lines and whether or not they're a good thing. I hope you enjoy this episode. And as always, remember to give us a follow on Instagram at the Bondi Podcast to stay up to date with all of our guests and episodes. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll find all of our episodes on Spotify. Cheers. Jason, welcome to the Bondi Podcast, mate. Thanks for having me. Look, we're here today to talk about your your amazing Instagram account, Drone Shark App. Uh, but the first question that we ask all of our guests on the podcast is, what's your favorite thing about Bondi? Uh, I've got to say, I love just Bondi's, um, it's like a party vibe, I guess, um, holiday vibe, you know, all the, you know, every time I come back home from holidays, I like, I, th- I think you know, I'm still on holidays, you know, it's got the big, it's got the awesome party vibe and just the do- diverse, you know, cultures in Bondi. I really love that too. So, yeah, yeah. we've, we've had similar answers to that. Um, it's like any time you leave Bondi and, and, and go overseas, when you come back, you're actually happy to come back, even though you yeah. might've been on this like amazing holiday, I know. like really ha- like that when you're coming down Bondi road and you get your first glimpse of the sea and the sunshine, you're like, Oh, yeah. I, I'm home, but home's fucking great. Yeah, well, I, I'm pretty privileged. I sit sit, and I just look over the whole beach and just go, well, you know, still on the holidays. So <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that'd be the number one thing I love, Yeah, just coming home and I'm still on holidays. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> mate. Beautiful. Love and life. For those who maybe don't know what Drone Shark app is, Jason, in your own words, how would you describe it? Okay, so... If we're going to talk about the app or the social media account, it's it's a bit. We'll go for the social media account because that's the that's the handle of the Instagram account, right? Yeah, but I'll start off by saying that it did start off being an app, so Drone Shark app. So, so not many people probably know this, but that's why we've got that's why we've got you on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, but it never really took off because there was too many maintenance issues with the app. So, what was the app trying to do? So, the app originally, originally my. My plan for the app was to film surfers and they could download their footage whilst I'm out keeping an eye if any sharks, you know, come in and we can um, alert for sharks and things like that. You know, it didn't really kick off. So then I just started seeing all these different sea life characters and so then I just turned it into um, the show that it is now. So I just remember the first time seeing the seal, which we now call Alex the seal. Was Alex the first... The first celebrity on the app then? Yeah, yeah. That's this that's how it sort of all the names came about because the seal kept turning up and so we eventually called him Alex and then all these other uh, creatures started showing up. Like, you know, the greenness sharks started swimming past, you know, under surfers all the time and so we started to name them Norman and oh, Nelly. Yeah. And so that's how <laughs> that all came about actually. So it was um yeah, it sort of just has fallen into place that way. So when when was this, Jason? Timing the naming of the characters? No, or? no. I mean, like, when did you sort of? Oh, start? when I started. Yeah. So, I, I, uh, probably it was two thousand eighteen. Actually, one of the boys said to me because I wasn't on Instagram at that point. I didn't even know what Instagram was. I don't think back then. He's like, Jay, you got to get on Instagram. I'm going, well, what's that? He goes, yeah, just get on and just put some videos on what you. So I started doing that, and then that sort of started to take off. I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. You know, I'll just keep doing this because it could be a good way of promoting the app eventually down the track. Um, and then as I started, you know, seeing more of the Sea Life characters and I started commentating on the characters as well, that sort of just, that, that sort of just evolved naturally as well. I just started talking like, oh, it's Alex, it's Alex you know. And I, I think I posted one once and everyone was like, oh, I love the commentary. And so I kept doing that and then at that, and then now that's, you know, that's what the show is. It's just. Yeah. So at what yeah. point was there like, if you look back on all the videos that you posted, was there a particular video? Was there a particular point that you noticed it take off? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I saw the big great white char. In Bondi? Yeah, well. Well, talk us through that. So I saw, so the first, so I've seen three or four great whites around Bondi. The first and one. And you've been doing it, sorry, for how long? Five years. Okay. So, so the three first, or four great whites in Bondi in five years. Yeah, so it's, you know, that that's just me looking, you know. Yeah. You know, you know, you got a drone, you know, you got a scope of whatever, you know, there could be a shark going, you know, you could miss anything any day or I'm not out there all day either. So only mm. a few hours in the morning. So, you know, there may have been a lot more sharks come through, but from what I've seen, um, not that many great whites, but so two really stand out ones, um, which I'm sure everyone's seen by now, but the, the first um, one was that Tamarama. It's probably about a three to three and a half metre great white. And one of the seals, um, so there's no, usually I see the sharks when there's lots of fish, so big schools of fish, there's no fish around. Uh, the seal had just come in. Alex? Uh, two, two, yeah, Alex, yeah, he was, he was named by that point. <laughs> it's like, oh, there goes Alex. And as he's sort of, he, he turned at uh, Bronte and we lost him. And then as we've turned the drone back around, you saw this huge great white in the middle of, like, between Tamarama and Bronte. Just was like, what the F is that, man? And we knew straight away, it's like, oh, it's a big white white. So I got, I, back then I had a big megaphone that I just, and I just got on the megaphone straight away because there was 10 guys in the water. It was pretty early. In the surf? Yeah. And I just said, um, I, could, I could probably say it word for word. I said, uh Guys, there's a big, great white. I recommend get out ASAP. There's a big, great white shark out there. And they all just bailed. Wow. So that that was, and then that, you know, because I've got footage of all that, that went on the news, you know, just because at the point, I, you know, I was trying to promote, you know, what I'm doing and and that. So I thought I'll get it on the news, you know, not not to create fear it's around scary, sharks, yeah. um, just to, uh Yeah helped me actually to be honest uh but then another another one was uh just off icebergs pool um we were filming norman one of the green earth sharks at the time it's like i said we had to, and, you know i had another couple of guys helping me at the time so one of the guys had the drone following the gray nurse and the battery was dying and he said um oh jay get out and just keep following Norman, he's just there. So I got up and I started following what I thought was Norman, but I started following this other shark on the bottom, just randomly. Um, Thinking it was a grey nurse or something like that? No, straight away I knew. I said, oh, this is not a grey nurse, man. Like, so I thought he was, he, he, he had um, not identified it correctly, but when, I, when we looked back at the footage, he did, because he was, the grey nurse was in the same shot. But I started following the shark and it was on the bottom and like literally it was, Within 30 seconds, it just launched off the bottom. So we got all this on video and just got this big fish in its mouth, just chomped it in half, thrashed it around a few times, swallowed it in probably the matter of uh, 10, 10 seconds, it was gone. And then it, there was all salmon on the beach that day. So it started heading towards the beach. And I was like, ah. Quick, we better get on the phone to the lifeguards. We were like stumbling because we were really only just in the beginning battling. Quick, call them. What What's their of, number? What time of day is this, Jason? Uh, everything's usually in the morning. So it would have been, I can't recall exactly, but it probably would have been around eight ish, I'd say, seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, so loads of people in the water. <clears throat> and um, we, we managed to get onto the lifeguards. Um, like I said, a bit clumsy back then, but we, we managed to get onto them today. There's. There's, um, there's a great white shark just heading into shore and they sounded the alarm. So how, you said it was yeah. just, it was swimming just off icebergs, like, are you talking like in line with the swimming pool at icebergs? Yeah, probably a little bit diagonal out off icebergs. So, you know, we've uh, probably, have you seen the shark nets out there? Probably. I've not seen them though. No. Probably, it was actually a day after the shark nets came down too. <laughs> but the sharks sort of come in because they come around the edges. Yeah. So it um, so pretty much in line with it. Well, you know the yellow marker out there, the yellow um, yeah. shark station, recording station, you know, probably halfway from there to the beach. 
So in the middle, pretty much. Pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was making a beeline for the beach? For the it went into the shore. How, so, clo how close did it get to the, to the shore? Oh, within 50 metres, because the fish were right on the shore, so it just followed, it just chased the fish. So what happened, yeah, so you can see on the footage, there's still a swimmer there and the shark's heading towards the swimmer, but the shark's going for the fish, right? You know, as I know this now, back in the early days, I used to think, oh, if you're out in the, in the ocean, a shark is going to come and, you know, have a go at you, but it's not the case. They're just they're mainly after fish and rays and whatever else. Yeah, you, you can be unlucky and be taken by a big great white, but this is just a juvenile great white at about 2.5 metres, so um, still take a good chunk out of you. But, um, but the lifeguards managed to get everyone out of the water at that point. Um, and it sort of just, it didn't hang long. It just, it had a bit of a go at the salmon. And what the salmon, what happens when you see a salmon school, if a shark, a shark will just launch into that salmon school, but then they'll just, they're pretty timid. They'll just, they'll, they'll go straight back out and the fish will follow them. So the big, yeah, because they want to get behind the shark. So the yeah. school of fish will follow the, the great white. And, and they pretty much just chased it out to see and it was gone. That was it. It was in, out. Wow. So that they're the two main ones that really stand out. Did the did the shark alarm go off that day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we called the lifeguards and they got the got everyone out of the water with the shark alarm. Wow. So, yeah, you can see that that's on on all my, all my socials. We'll get Danny to cut it in with this clip. <laughs> yeah. So that was a pretty um, crazy moment because it was, was very un what? very unexpected. Like to to follow a random shark that was we thought was a green ass and turned out to be a great white. From your perspective, Jason, on both those occasions where you've potentially thought people could be in danger here, how are you feeling? Yeah, well, it's, it's pretty, um, yeah, it's pretty ner nerving when you're sort of watching a, you know, a great white come in and you, you don't really know, you know, what that shark's going to do. But I, I guess over time, like, and in saying that I haven't seen any great whites since, this time and that's 2019 so here at bondo at least i see them down the coast a lot because i know where they they cruise along this beach and i go study them actually but um so now i i think i'd be a lot more relaxed knowing that especially with the juveniles they're sort of they're, they are very timid and they will just come in and and they're just looking like i said for the fish and the rays and you know they're not gonna go straight for a swimmer and just go chomp um but you know they have they have bitten before the juveniles. They have like what's called a test bite. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think, and, and I haven't seen this, but I think what would happen is that the shark would probably come in for a good look and maybe circle around five times before they even attempted a bite. So in that time, you know, I wouldn't let it get to that point if if I get the chance. I would always, you know all the lifeguards or um, I've got, you know, um, other other methods of letting people know in the water myself as well. So, Are the grey nurses the most common sharks that come into, the, into Bondi? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're always out there, um, but they only come into shore when the salmon. Come in, yeah. Yeah, the, the big schools of fish are around. They, they're usually out in the caves, out off Marks Park and mm. out off North Point. You know, they, they hang out in the caves down there. They're not particularly dangerous, so are they, Jason? No, no, no. But there has been like a couple of recorded bites in nibbles. In the, yeah, in the past, uh, nothing, nothing serious. But you know, probably, maybe, you know, a surfer might have stepped on it as it's jumped off the wave or something. Yeah, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't just bite for no reason. Yeah. So, um, so whenever I see those sharks around Bondi, I just, I don't tell. Nah. anyone to get up you know it's just let them do their thing it's yeah let them do their thing and sort of make a bit of a show out of it you know <laughs> that's where that's where the commentary comes in i start yeah yeah if you, know. you chase them yeah if you chase everyone away you're not going to get any good yeah, so I, need, I actually need the sharks to come back i'm yeah. like where are you come back <laughs> it's been really quiet out there lately because there hasn't been that much uh skills of fish out there last couple of years actually it's been really quiet um do you chalk that down to anything in particular I think just weather patterns, a climate change a little related bit different. 
Uh, it's too early to say that, but I, from what I see, I think it's just the, you know, we had that uh, year or two of that, you know, the El Nino sort of, yeah, you know, where there were patterns where we we're getting a lot of subleys, and mind you, we're getting a lot of subleys now, I reckon, just this year, but um, a lot more than what we used to. So the salmon like nice, flat, calm water. And, they, and then that's when they school in their big schools and then that's what brings everything in, you know, the dolphins, the seals, the sharks will come and, you know, just pound them. But mm. they just haven't been there. So there's no food source, there's no predators, so they're just out deeper. Fair enough. You know, yeah. Do, do, we, um, do we get any other shark types in Bondi? Any bulls, any hammerheads? Uh, yeah, definitely home of the hammerhead. Homer the Hammerhead. Yeah, yeah. Homer. Homer's oh, out. that's right, Homer. Yes, Homer's yes, yes. There. A lot of bronze whalers when I first started, you know, because there was a lot of salmon when I first started. There was just salmon galore every day. Mm. Um, but bronze whalers would come, a lot of bronze whalers would come in and charge the schools. I've had guys in the water just, you know, surfers at Tama saying, you know, there's a couple of bronzes out here, just be mindful that the surfers don't care. Are they vicious, the, the, the bronzes? No, no, they're not. Um, look, you wouldn't want to get bitten by a no. bronze whaler, but maybe if you're a spear fisherman or something, they might have a go at you. Mm. But, you know, I've seen, you know, a big school, a guy sitting in a big school of salmon, well, he was behind the school of salmon, or, and the bronze whaler sort of went around behind the surfer and just straight into the school of salmon, you know. So at those times, I'm, I do think sometimes, oh, well, look out, mate, you know. It must have to myself, you know, but uh, but I haven't seen any bronze whalers or great whites. Bulls. You know. I've seen one bull shark at um, Bronte once, um, and that was out at the reef, and that's it. I haven't seen a bull. Mm. But yeah, I've seen them on other beaches, but just not in Bondi. Um, and mine, I'll only see what comes into the bay. I'm not gonna. Like if there's a shark out in deeper water, yeah, if it's on the surface, I'll see it with the drone. But, you know, you, you probably heard you get a lot of sharks pinging off that yeah. yellow, you know, receiver. You know, they they could be anywhere from 500 metres off that out to sea. So, you know, it, sharks cruising out there all the time past in deeper water, but they're not coming into the beaches because the food source is not there. But when the food source comes back, the salmon, it'll, you know, you know, I'm bound to see more sharks. So I, I think the last time the salmon were really here in force was, was probably August last year. Um, and they hung around for a good week or so. And I think I saw 12 grey nurses at once on the shore. Wow. At Bondi. Beautiful. Yeah. And, yeah, I haven't seen them since. So, What brings the dollies in? Anything. They love the waves. They love just – sometimes they'll stay there all day. Just yeah, I've seen out. that. Um, but they'll pound the salmon as well if the salmon's there. You know, they, you can see them come for miles. It's, I, I miss those days actually when the salmon were around all the time. I pray for the salmon to come back. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> because the do, you can see the dolphins coming from, from miles, you know. You just – you know, because I've got some – binoculars that I just sit and look out. I surface watch as well. Yeah. You know, if I'm not flying the drone, I'll just surface watch, especially when it's whale season too. But you can just see, like literally from a kilometre out, you'll see the, the whitewash of the dolphins just charging in so they can hear their vibrations or smell whatever they do. They know the salmon are there. It's probably the vibrations I think it is. And they, yeah, like from a kilometre away, they'll just – Nail it straight to the <laughs> straight into Bondi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. Uh, haven't seen that for a while, so I'm ah, they've not been really, here for a while. Actually, hopefully really they come back soon. See that again, Jason. Let's um, let's get into the into the shark nets. So, mm. do we currently have shark nets out in Bondi? Yeah, they'll go down on uh, end of April, last day of April. They'll go down for winter, right? Because I, I think they do it mainly. Because of the um, the whales, but I'd like to think that's the main reason they do it. Because of all the entanglements you see, and 
Um, so yeah, they'll go down in May, uh, end of April, sorry, and then they'll, I think they go, yeah, maybe end of September, they go back up. So they're, they're down for a few months. Yeah. Yeah. So when I first heard of, you know, when I first thought about shark nets, I was imagining this massive net that essentially mm. like covered the entire bay in terms of width and like from the bottom of the yeah. sea to the top as well to stop anything getting in. I've seen, I've seen pictures of shark nets and they're very, it's like a, ten, it's like nearly like a tennis net Yeah, in comparison. Pretty much. So it's uh, not. I, I think a lot funny. of people's perception is that it's a, a total barrier, but it's not. They're, I've measured them out. They're probably only um, not even a third. I'd say probably a third of the bay in length, all right? Um, so there's, there's got to be a good couple of hundred metres on each end that the sharks just go around. like, And I see all my sharks coming around the edges, around the rocks. Um, very rarely have I seen one coming through the middle. Um, not just that, yeah, like I said, they don't touch the bottom, so you can get bull sharks because they bottom huggers, they're just cruising under it. And I think it's about two metres off the top as well, so you just get the cruisers over the top. So it's really just that. Middle section's pretty. Middle section that, <laughs> you know. Is catching yeah all the bycatch as you know like the turtles and the the rays and you know things that yeah. So what's the point in them? I I really see zero point. They're way outdated. What was nineteen thirty nine? I think they were put in place, and I think no one in government just has the balls to sort of take them down. I reckon you know mm -hmm. I, I, they just don't want to make that call because then if something does happen, they go ah oh, see because you took the shark nets down, but that'd be you know, I've that big great white that I saw in January at um, Bron Bronte Tama, that came around the nets. You know, because they were in place at that time. Because there's nets at Tamarama and Bronte as well. Same thing. They're even less of a stretch of that hole. You know, this is just like a tiny little portion from you know. So there's such a huge opening each each end, especially Tamarama and Bronte. So they're not keeping the sharks out, but what no. they're doing is they're entangling a lot of other sea life that comes yeah. into the bay. So what's getting caught in there? Yeah, so you've got your rays, your turtles, um, you know, other sharks, you know, that are targeted species. So the only species that are, they target are great whites, bull shark and tiger shark. So, you know, you've got your non-targeted ones like the little hammerheads, you know. Grey nurse, there's a lot of grey nurse that have been killed. And you know they're they're endangered, so it's you know we don't want to see you know the end of Norman and Nelly and no you know definitely not. So yeah, the shark nets are pretty pointless. But another thing I don't really like are the drum lines. Why not? Um, I personally feel if they're going to do testing, you know scientific testing well why not just take it away from our beaches why have a baited hook out there that a little shark because they're, they're only you know baits this big so a big shark's not going to take a big shark will take a little shark mm. so if a little shark takes that bait a, you know it could draw a big shark in you know because that shark's you know thrash around or you know one of the seals has been hooked on the drum line so in Bondi? Uh, yep. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I've captured it. I've captured this and the little hammerhead's been hooked. And what happens when a hammerhead or a seal gets hooked on the bait lines? Um, so, look, credit to the guys. They, they are pretty quick. So there's a little signal that, you know, once the animal's hooked and it pulls, it sends a signal to the guys in the boat and they come and they unhook it and they do their testing. What are they testing so, for? Oh, they're just doing scientific research and then, you know, the... the sh the sharks that they want to catch, like the whites and, and, and stuff like that, they tag them for scientific research. So that that's their main aim is to tag white sharks. But I, I don't know how many white sharks they're going to catch on the drum lines here yeah. because Alex is still steals the bait every day now. <laughs> He's been still. Like he did get caught once, but he, um, if it was Alex, it might have been one of his buddies. But, uh, yeah, he they've... They found a way to just pull that uh, bait off every day. I've filmed them all the time now. 
just still the bait. They've outsmarted them? Yeah. Yeah, well, they got to eat something because the salmon haven't been around. Yeah. So they've been just picking off the drumline boats. Yeah. So they're really pointless in that regard as well because, you know, the seals are stealing all the bait. But I always thought that those drumlines were there, like, as a, as a nearly a form of protection as well. So that if a great white wall was coming into the bay, they'd be more inclined to go to the drum line rather than go to the beach. I, I didn't realise that those drum lines were there for scientific purposes. Yeah, no, it's mainly... Why are they so it's close to Bondi? It's like, for tagging, yeah, yeah. So, they, yeah, well, that's my point. Yeah, why, get why them away. Why don't they just do it out a few kilometres out, do, the, do your testing out there, catch some sharks out there and... It doesn't make sense to me It doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> Jesus. So that's, yeah. But that's... That's my opinion. You probably get a lot of, you know, other people have their own opinions, but just that's my take on it. I just don't, I think if they're going to do it, I, I would like to see them not do it at all, but yeah. if they're going to do it, do it. How deep I don't, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, thanks for that, Jason. Like I've got one more question, mate. Yeah. Um, that question is, you've been doing this for a long time now, what, what sort of stands out to you as a favourite memory or a favourite video or a favourite experience of this whole drone shark app journey? Uh, I don't know if you saw it. We had a big fever of cow nose rays um, come into Bondi that, you know, there were so many and they just created this perfect, um, uh, people would call them like little pixels or whatever. They, they, they just looked amazing and it was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. So that was pretty cool to see in Bondi. But I, I do see those count those rays all the time now after seeing them that not not in Bondi but else elsewhere um but the first time I spotted them was pretty amazing um things with whales too you know you probably saw the one recently come in following the kayaker yeah that's incredible that was pretty cool amazing yeah. look Jason that's been absolutely amazing mate. I've learned I've learned a lot from uh, from this chat mate so I really no appreciate worries. you coming in for a chat well yep no worries thanks for having me I hope other people learn a lot about the shark nets especially in the drum lines because that's Pretty important, you know? Very important, mate. Yeah. Very important. Thanks, cool. buddy. No Cheers. Worries.